Hello everyone and welcome back to Prestige Reef. Today is the day you've all been waiting for. It's time to start the cycle. As you know by now, this is an entirely Red Sea system and they have developed a complete guide of running a reef tank, which if you follow it exactly, step by step, will lead to success. I promised you at the beginning I'd show you the good, the bad, and the ugly side of reefing. So bring on the diatoms. So what exactly is cycling an aquarium? To put it simply, cycling an aquarium is the process of building a colony of a select group of aerobic bacteria to convert toxic waste into something much less harmful, nitrate. Red Sea's Nopox then turns nitrate into nitrogen gas, removing it from the system, thus completing the cycle. Although waiting for a tank to cycle can be one of the most painful parts of setting up a new tank, getting it right at the beginning can make a big difference to your long-term success. I'll be honest with you, I, like many people, assumed that this part would be pretty boring, but I was pleasantly surprised. This will be a two-part video, and if you stick with each of them until the end, you'll find out why. I'll also cover three of the most common mistakes regarding testing. An old school method of cycling a tank which sadly is still used is to throw in a couple of hardy fish and see which ones did and didn't survive. This is cruel and outdated and should be stopped. Red Sea's answer to this is their Reef Mature Kit, and when combined with their marine care test kits, you can cycle an aquarium in a very controlled manner. They are best when used in conjunction with each other, as the Reef Mature Kit provides you with everything you need to start the cycle, while also giving you a day-to-day -day guide which explains exactly what is happening with your water chemistry, whereas the Marine Care Kit provides everything you need to test the important parameters, so that you can confirm the goal parameters are being hit on the days they're meant to. Their program states that it also has the ability to produce a healthy colony of denitrifying bacteria, that if you follow it correctly, your tank will be safe for even delicate SPS corals in 21 days. When using the Reef Mature Starter Kit, you get a bottle of Nitrobac, Bactostart, NO3PO4X or Nopox for short, and KH Coraline Grow. Other than Nopox, which I use all the time, I've never used any of these products previously. Nitrobac is a concentrated mixture of nitrifying and denitrifying bacteria spores, which are used to seed your rock work. Bactostart is designed to simulate a natural waste product, which is what the bacteria use as a food source to thrive and multiply. The advantage of using it is that it's a precise amount of waste, therefore it's not too little or too much, which can inhibit the process. This means you get the optimum cycle progression, which saves time. Nopox is a form of carbon dosing, which once again is a type of food, but this time it's just for anoxic bacteria. This type of bacteria is what is used to reduce nitrate and phosphates, and a regular daily dose of Nopox will eventually become part of the tank's daily routine. And KH Coraline Grow, a concentrated marine buffer complex fortified with minor and trace elements that promote growth of coralline algae, which most people find desirable. As I'm not starting the tank with live rock, there won't be any coralline algae in the system, therefore I will need to remove some of the coralline algae from my main tank at home and crush it up to seed this system. The Marine Care Test Kit is once again sticking to Red Sea's ethos of keeping everything as simple as possible, where they're providing a more basic, easy to use test kit with lower resolutions but with a higher range of parameters. These parameters are ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, pH and KH, all of which can be stored neatly in the chemical resistant plastic box provided. There are three major mistakes which people make with regards to testing their tanks, which can provide inaccurate results, and if you're going to go through the effort of testing your water, you want the results to be as accurate as possible. The first is storing your test kits in the cabinet below your tank. Although this will keep other areas of your house tidy, this isn't the optimum place to store test kits, and it's best to keep them in a cool, dry place to ensure longevity. The second is not holding the reagent bottles vertical. This can cause inconsistent drop sizes. And finally, the third is not rinsing out and drying your vials properly. Failure to do this can leave residue in them which can affect the next test. Each of these issues is very simple to fix. Right, so let's get started. Day 1. Now the whole point of the process is that I'm meant to follow the instructions to the letter, 
so if it says to do something, I have to do it exactly as it recommends. The instructions state that before doing anything, I first need to make sure my salinity is between 1.023 and 1.025, which I've confirmed is by using their refractometer, and the temperature of the tank is a steady 25.8 degrees Celsius. Those of you that saw my aquascaping video will know that for substrate, I'm using the Reef Base Pink Live Sand, which is a pleasant change to what I've used previously, as it didn't require washing, and it's also been coated in bacteria to once again promote a healthy bacteria population, which in theory will help with the cycle. The rocks I'm using also have the same effect, therefore there shouldn't be any shortage of bacteria in this system. A very important part of this method is the protein skimmer, and a protein skimmer which is appropriately sized for your system is required, and as many of you know, I'm using the Reefer Skimmer RSK600. This part is essential to get right, as Nopox requires a skimmer to work correctly. Day two is when the process actually starts, and the first thing it says is to check and adjust the salinity and temperature if required. In a tank without an auto top up, there may have been a small amount of evaporation. However, this tank comes complete with an auto top up, which appears to be doing its job properly. Next, I need to test and record pH and KH, with the KH currently showing at nine, which means I don't need to do anything. However, if it was below 8.4 kh, I would have needed to add some kh coralline grow. It's now time to start my first dose of nitrobac, which is 20 mils per 100 litres. I worked out that the water in the system is 360 litres, after I take into account the displacement from the sand, rock work and equipment. Therefore, I needed 72 mils. It's really important that you know exactly how much water is in your system from day one because otherwise you could easily be under or overdosing anything you add in the future. Take the time and measure it out correctly. It might take longer initially, but it will save you so much trouble in the future. Then I needed to add 10 milliliters of Bactostart per 100 liters. Therefore I needed 36 milliliters. And finally, three milliliters of Nopox per 100 liters, which means I needed 11 milliliters. That's it for today guys. As I said, this is a two-part video, so make sure you tune in next week to see the second half. I hope you enjoy watching the video. Please feel free to comment below if you have any questions. If you did enjoy it, why not click that like and subscribe button. Have a good week, and I'll see you next time.